So you've set up your telescope during the day and it all looks good. The sky is clear. Then the sun sets, the temperature drops and lo and behold, the clouds roll in. Now what do you do? Here are 5 things to do on a cloudy night, plus an important bonus tip at the end of the video. Here we go. Plan your next night of observing or astrophotography. A common mistake lots of newbies make is to eagerly rush out when the skies are clear, only to find out that the object they wanted to observe is already below the horizon or doesn't rise above the horizon until 4am. Whoops! <laughs> you should have spent some time on planning your evening on a cloudy night. In the age of internet and technology, you can use digital apps that are freely available like Stellarium and Sky Safari that can show you in real time what objects are available at your specific time and location. It is possible to adjust the time to future dates and switch locations, which is great when you want to plan an astronomy or astrophotography night in advance of your weekend break or your holiday. Learn when different objects are in the night sky throughout the year. Another useful thing is to familiarize yourself with objects that are worthwhile to observe and photograph throughout different seasons of the year. One nice thing about deep sky observations and astrophotography is that objects outside of our solar system remain pretty much in the same location over the years. So it makes sense to familiarize yourself with the kind of objects that are available to observe and image during the different seasons of the year. In fact, there are some wonderful books out there with amazing information and pictures, like the wonderful astrophotographer's guidebook from Galactic Hunter. This book is created by Antoine and Dahlia, a very cute stargazing couple from Las Vegas. The book provides a very nice overview of wonderful targets that are visible for every season throughout the year, and you'll be supporting them as well. If you're Dutch like me, you may want to check out a star guide from Zenith called Sterregids. Uh, the Sterregids comes out every year and it includes everything you need to know about the location of objects inside and outside our solar system. I'll provide a link to the Galactic Hunter guidebook and the Dutch Sterregids in the video description below. So my third tip is to learn more about the objects that you are observing and photographing. Over the years I've seen lots of astrophotographers that really put their emphasis on making the absolute best picture they can, without also spending a little bit of time on understanding what they are actually photographing. That's unfortunate because, in my humble opinion, one of the best things about astrophotography is learning about the objects you are looking at. For example, when I saw the Andromeda Galaxy for the first time through a telescope, it just appeared as a fuzzy smudge. However, it completely transformed into something magical for me when I understood that I was actually looking at an entire galaxy with billions of stars much like our own Milky Way that is located about 2.5 million light years away. Another example is this picture I took last year of the Whirlpool Galaxy and surroundings. Although it is not the best picture I've ever taken, I've learned that the Whirlpool Galaxy is roughly 31 million light years away. I also discovered that the yellow blob is actually a satellite galaxy, NGC 5195, that is interacting with the Whirlpool Galaxy as it pulls at one of its spiral arms. What I found even more amazing is that there are actually fuzzier galaxies in the background of that same picture that are millions to hundreds of millions of light years away. So we are seeing these galaxies as they were millions to hundreds of millions of years ago. So, do yourself a favor and buy a good astronomy book. Settle down with a warm drink and uh, enjoy learning about the many wonders of the night sky on a cloudy night. So my fourth tip would be to join an astronomy or astrophotography forum. What better way to share the sights you've seen and the experiences you've had with like-minded souls on the internet? Now, I'm not talking about visiting my own YouTube channel, Vido's Astro Forum, or my website, astroforumspace.com with many videos and blogs on how to perform backyard astronomy. Who am I kidding? Please do visit and give me some feedback. But apart from that, there are many international fora with dedicated user groups who are particularly interested in backyard astronomy and astrophotography. Like for instance, cloudynights.com and stargazerlaunch.com. You can also choose to look at specific Facebook community pages and Discord servers. 
just understand that whatever data you share on Facebook and Discord, <laughs> it will be logged, collected and sold to the highest bidder. Or <laughs> you might be hacked by cyber criminals. But all kidding aside, it is nice to stay in touch with an online community. You can find a wealth of information on just about any problem you are having with the hobby and you can ask the community for help if you can't find the answer you were looking for. Besides online fora, I would also advise you to check if there are any backyard astro communities nearby, as they can share valuable experiences about backyard astronomy close to your location. Also, you may spark new offline long-lasting relationships. I would encourage you to visit these fora and spend some time reading the posts before you join to make sure it is relevant to you and when you found the right one, don't be shy, uh, go ahead and make an introduction, the introduction post so the community knows a little bit about you and what you want from the hobby. You don't have to reveal any personal details, unlike idiots like myself who share way too much info about themselves and their location on YouTube videos. Editing and sharing your astro pictures. If you have dipped your toes in the bewildering world of astrophotography, a cloudy night is the best time to spend fiddling with the images you've taken. Post-processing of photos can be an involved process, and I've spent many nights trying to master programs like Deep Sky Stacker, Photoshop, Lightroom, and the mother of all programs, PixInsight, to edit my astrophotography pictures. It is beyond this video to discuss all of these programs. However, let me give you some general suggestions to get started. If you don't want to spend money on editing software, you may want to start using Deep Sky Stacker, which is a freely available astrophotography tool to stack your Deep Sky astrophotography pictures, and you can use a free photo editor to get started. If you have some video recordings of the moon or the planets in our solar system, then you should definitely check out AutoStacker and Registack 6, which are freely available software tools you can use to stack, uh, select and edit your videos. If you have some pictures of the night sky taken with your DSLR camera, some wide field or uh, nightscape pictures, I highly recommend you take a look at Sequitur, which is a freely available software tool to edit your wide field pictures of the night sky. It also includes an option to create wonderful time-lapse videos of your pictures as well. I will put links to videos and editing tools in the description below. On a personal note, I was feeling a bit depressed in November last year due to all the lockdowns and to cloudy nights in my country and I was fiddling around in PixInsight to take my mind off all the negative news lately and after spending three days on just one picture of the Pac-Man Nebula, I was actually rewarded with a NASA Astronomy Picture of the Day award. I still can't believe that happened. And it shows that cloudy nights and sad moods can turn into something wonderful in the end. If you want to share and get feedback on your pictures, astrobin.com is a pretty cool and popular website where you can upload your astro pictures and show them to its community. Astrobin also has a plate solving option so it will show you an additional chart with the scientific names of the object you have photographed. You can then actually click on that name and find other astrophotographers that have attempted to photograph that same object so you can get in touch with them. You might become a bit demotivated when looking at all those great astro pictures, especially when you're just starting out. When that's the case, you should remember two things. First of all, most astrophotographers spend many years developing their skills and the pictures you are looking at are definitely not the first pictures they took of the night sky. Believe me, I know. Secondly, you should check out the astrophotography gear that they are using. When you have calculated the true cost of their astrophotography equipment that was used to make that great picture, you might feel a bit better. So I really hope these tips were useful to you guys and I do need to mention one bonus tip I promised you on what to do on cloudy nights. Now, One of the downsides to astronomy and astrophotography is that you spend a lot of time on it. 
either in the garden in the in the evening when huddling over your telescope or when editing your astro photos which can really be addictive so my bonus tip for a cloudy night is to also spend some good quality time with your family or partner just hang out with them have a good time and when you'll do they'll be much more appreciating and understanding when you do go out for that other backyard astronomy marathon session with that let me know what you think and what kind of questions you want me to answer for you and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Clear skies!